to MMA Fancast. My name's Luke, and I'm joined by Shane Nuttall. Shane, welcome to the show. Hey, hey Luke, how you doing? I'm doing very well. It's good having you on the show. First time guest. It's always exciting. Um, you are headed in to Braun the Bird 9 for 247 Fighting Championships, October 23rd, Monroeville Convention Center for your MMA debut. What's it like under a month out of your MMA debut? It's very exciting. You know, it's like I've been working really hard for this and uh, I'm just waiting to get in there now. Well, even though we know that your fight is just a couple weeks away, let's back up. We'll work towards the fight. Uh, what was your first sports or athletic stuff you got involved with, even if it wasn't martial arts? Kind of what's your history in sports, athleticism, and martial arts? Starting young and working up. Um, as far as martial arts, it's pretty limited. You know, I wasn't ever really into wrestling or nothing like that. Um, I was mostly just like a football player during high school, you know, uh, always very athletic, you know, very fast and stuff, what, whatnot. But other than that, uh, really haven't been uh, much experienced in uh, like wrestling or nothing like that. Always like either football or like like basketball or something like that. Like, okay. And what were your main positions in football in high school? Uh, I, I like to play running back in a, Defense, they kind of had me all over, you know, running back or a linebacker or cornerback. Sure, sure. And in and in a high school, did you like being on defense where you have to react or did you like being on offense where you have to create? Because as a running back, you create uh, opportunities for yourself and as defense, you have to react. I liked offense a lot better. I, I liked like being a running back. I was very uh, – very fast and very shifty, you know, and like pretty decently powerful for my size, you know, like I, I'd get in there and, you know, just keep the feet driving and, you know, move the ball as much as I could. And connecting your running back experience to the stand up, the kickboxing element of MMA, how do you think that's connected? Do you feel like your footwork is fast and shifty given sort of your, uh, your background? keeping your feet moving, all the stuff you had to do as a running back? Yeah, I, I feel like it helps a lot, you know, uh, being able to, like, move fast and react quickly. Sure. And what what took you on the journey from high school football after it ended to where you are now in MMA? Um, I was always, like, interested in, like, fighting and stuff, like, whatnot, but uh, I just kind of like decided to do it one day, you know, like I wanted to, wanted to get back into sports, you know, I, as I grew up, I, I got away from like being athletic and active and all that, you know, so I wanted to, wanted to find something that would like get me back into that. And I figured fighting would be the perfect thing. <laughs> and what gym did you connect with? Is that still your gym? Where are you training out of now? Uh, the gym I'm training at now, I just found like last year, like okay. last number. Uh, it's great. I love it. Great team, great people. Uh, before then, I would I'd dabble in the gym here and there, you know, like a couple boxing gyms, a couple mm -hmm. MMA gyms, but never really stuck around, never really took it serious until I found this gym. It's definitely like my home for sure. And what what is that home gym name? Uh, Personal Training Tactics. And where is it located out of as far as the city and, uh, and state? Uh, it's located down in uh, Brentwood or I think it's Brentwood or Carrick area. Well, wonderful. Great. Um, and how far away is where you live from the Monroeville area? Is this going to be quite a drive in for October 23rd um, or is it pretty short? It's, I, I live in McKeesport, so it's oh. pretty close for me. Yeah, yeah. it's like. About 15 minutes. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> that is that is pretty nice. So when did your coaches think that you were ready for your debut? You said you've been with them just under a year. And so yeah. how did they bring that up to you? Or did you come to them with the idea of wanting to take your first fight? Well, I, I was very eager as soon as I started. Uh, I actually had a, a backyard fight for a backyard league down in Virginia. And uh, that's actually what got me into the gym. 
I went down there, no experience, you know, and I lost. Like so, uh, I was very eager to get back and like prove myself. So I, I joined the gym and uh, and I told him my uh, like what I wanted to do, my goals and stuff, and he, he just told me that if uh, if I really want to do that, like just keep working and prove myself, and that's what I did. And, you know, I, I showed up every day, and uh, now we're here. And it's nice that you transitioned from backyard where that showed a lot of courage and energy to get out there and kind of excitement. But, you know, training matters. There's not, there's not too many people who can successfully fight without training. You know, you occasionally see videos of people on the street and stuff, but any successful street fight without training is usually because uh, the other person isn't well-trained either. And as martial arts and mixed martial arts increases in popularity more and more people have training what have you enjoyed the most about your almost year uh, of training is it the the grappling the submission the striking what aspect of mma have you enjoyed the most i would say the the submission grappling it's uh it's a lot more complicated than like everything else like not that and not that uh like striking and all that isn't but think there's more to the ground and it's makes you makes you think more and work more you know and, uh, once once it starts clicking and you start like uh pulling off submissions it, it it feels pretty good you know what i mean i think i think that's what i enjoy the most yeah bjj is a whole new world it's a whole new way of looking at things i think most people have seen kickboxing or striking whether it's boxing or some of the Karate. Um, I grew up watching Walker, Texas Ranger, you know, which was a lot of karate or any of the Jackie Chen movies, Rush Hour made a bunch of money. But really, jujitsu is it's just a new way of looking at the body and the vulnerabilities of the body. Um, when you when you know that your opponent is a wrestler, do you do you focus a lot more on on understanding how to throw submissions up from your back? Do you work a lot on uh, defensive takedown type stuff or do you just train kind of what uh you want to do um we do adapt like to the to the opponent a little bit but uh and most mostly just working on like like dealing with uh dealing with pressure you know mm -hmm. i i know that he's he's a uh pretty experienced wrestler so I'm, we're expecting to have to deal with some pressure you know but uh other than that, then we, uh, yeah, we kind of just work what we want to work. You know, we don't want to completely worry about what the other guy's going to do. We want to worry about what we're going to do. Because you know, if, if you worry about what, what they're going to do, then, you know, you're just, you're just going to be thinking about it the whole time and be a deer in headlights. You, know? you ain't going to, you ain't going to respond the way that you should. You know what I mean? Yes. And a, a fight is really each fighter trying to make the other fighter fight their game you know what they want them to do so i can see your mindset sounds like your coach is really looking at you doing what's going to work for you in this fight the Cahill brothers are are very well known tanner is your opponent very well known for their d1 wrestling experience um but are also still relatively new to mma just like you are so it's going to be very exciting what do you what do you want to see out of yourself come october 23rd um I'd like to see myself uh, win for sure. You know, that's always a good thing. But uh, now I just want to, just want to prove myself. You know, I, like if if I win, great. If I don't, you know, then go back to the drawing board and keep working. But uh, yeah, I just just want to prove to myself that I'm not just some backyard fighter or an old high school football player. You know, like. <laughs> Just want to be able to hang with the, the top guys out there. It's a great attitude to have that you want to prove something to yourself and also recognize that MMA, particularly amateur MMA, is all about self-development. You know, it can take some time to get things figured out. MMA has a lot of elements. I always say MMA both has a ton of ways to win and a lot of ways to lose. You know, there's just a lot going on. Boxing um, is very exciting, but it's limited. It's only two weapons. Um, and MMA has tons and tons of weapons. Speaking of weapons, 
Um, in a backyard Virginia rule set, there was probably wasn't a lot of rules. What do you know about the rule set in novice when, when, when you don't have ground and pound and you don't have head kicks and you don't have knees to the face or elbows to the face? Do you think some of those restrictions are good at the amateur level in MMA rule set wise? Um, I think that could be good, you know, especially for for guys that aren't as experienced. Um, I think it could be like a like good for safety, you know. But uh, but yeah, I think it does kind of kind of limit like the ground guys, you know, like that's. It's a big part of the ground, you know, ground and pound and all that. So I feel like that, that could limit them there. But uh, yeah, um, I'd say that say it could go either way. You know, it could be limiting or it could be good. And that does make sense. Any rule set is going to have, as you point out, it's going to have some aspects that make a lot of sense at the developing. It's really to help people develop their skills with some level of safety and of course it does also take away some skill set that might be beneficial i think it's always very exciting to see a 247 fighting chip uh card because you'll have debut fighters like you and you'll have all the way up to experienced pros which i think is really the future of mma both debuters all the way up to experienced pros um how much look have you been to an mma fight before uh, live as a fan and what did you take away from that if you did uh yes i actually went to the fight back in august for uh 24 7 fighting back in august i believe sure. i believe tanner's brother taylor fought that night if i'm not mistaken. yeah that was the august that was the august 7th card uh in in monroeville which was a very exciting card taylor yeah. made his uh I think that was his second fight. That might have been his second fight for Taylor Kale because I believe he debuted in uh, there was a May double card fight, which was very unique as a, as an announcer in May. Uh, they got approval because of the because of limitations because of COVID and stuff to do two fight cards on the same day, um, a, a, a one o'clock and an evening. So that was a back to back, which was very nice. So what did you take away from the August seventh for seeing a fight live? Um, and being able to be close and watching all fights. What did you take away from that that can help you? Um, it gave, definitely gave me insight on, like, how, you know, like, the, as far as, like, the rules and, like, whatnot, like, how how they ha handle that for amateurs. And, sure. uh, and it, was, it was just, like, a cool atmosphere. You know, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, it was a nice show. And, uh, like, I definitely felt like I could – be a guy in there, you know what I mean? Like I could see myself in the cage as I was watch, watching. Well, that's a great takeaway to not only see how the rule sets, uh, Chip Snyder is a fantastic referee. He was the referee in the cage um, and he does a good job both beforehand. I encourage all fighters, but particularly uh, amateur fighters to really listen and ask questions to the referee. Um, that's probably not something that happens in a backyard league a lot, but you'll have the opportunity to talk and meet with the referee. He's going to talk to the novice amateurs, the advanced amateurs, and the pros all separately because they all have different rule sets. Um, so he's very good at that. He's super experienced. He'll also talk to you during the fight in the cage. And you can, if there's something that you don't understand before the fight, ask, because that's a big part of learning, which I think is good. And what was it like for you to be able to picture yourself in there after seeing it live? Uh, it was it was an experience. It uh, definitely helped my mental game, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of kind of helped me like expect or uh, know what to expect, you know. Once that once it, that time did come, you know, like like uh, seeing everybody walk out and seeing them get ready in the cage and all that. Like, it was it def I'd say it helped my mental more than anything for sure. The mental game of visualizing it, I think, is very important. A lot of amateur fighters that I used to coach and train, I would always try to require them to go to an MMA fight live like you did before their first fight. Sometimes they would just be like, no, the first MMA fight I go to, I want to be fighting. And it's like, well, you can do that, but you kind of lose the perspective of how things work. And I think a big part um, of seeing a fight live is being close enough to hear their breathing and kind of see how exhausting and also how 
people have to kind of save their gas tank when you watch the UFC level because it's on video and also these are the best of the best. It can kind of be uh, easy to overlook how tiring this stuff is. Did you pick up on kind of different levels and how the fighters had to pace themselves? Yeah, I did. Uh, it definitely uh, changed from like pro to amateur. You know what I mean? It was uh, not that anybody like gassed out or did bad or anything like that, but it's definitely uh, a different level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and, and for fans that are coming out to watch you, I'll say this. If fans have never been to a, a pro MMA card that also has amateurs and advanced amateurs, I think it's an incredible opportunity for fans to appreciate all fighters at their development level. The debut fighters, the experienced amateurs, the uh, debut pro, the experienced pro, they all have something to offer. And I think sometimes... Um, it's good for fans to kind of appreciate where everything is. And with the matchmaking, what 247 does, you kind of see the card move through the different levels, which I think is very educational to the fans. What are you, what are you looking forward to fan-wise for you? I, I didn't realize you live so close to the place, which is great. And so how many fans do you expect to come out? And what would you say to somebody watching this uh, to encourage them to come out and watch you fight? Uh, to encourage them, I would say that you know, it's going to be a great show. I'm going to give it all I got, you know what I mean? And uh, being so close to the event, I, I do expect a lot of friends and family to be there. You know, I've, I've sold a few tickets. I got a lot of tickets left, obviously. Still a little bit, uh, still two weeks to go. But sure. uh, a lot of uh, a lot of friends saying, like, oh, yeah, I want a ticket, you know, and I'm just waiting to, for them to get it and all that. So I'm expecting to have a, a big fan base, you know. It's uh, it's kind of good and bad because you know, like, got everybody there watching me. But at the same time, builds uh, makes me a little more, you know, like antsy or nervous because all my friends and family are there. But you know, I'm 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 very prepared for this, so I I uh, not sweating that too much. Well, maybe something you picked up on August seventh, which can be good visualization and mental prep is no matter how much is going on outside the cage, you can kind of see how the fighters dialed in once they stepped in the cage, their walk, because yes, you can kind of put uh, the greatest in my mind, the greatest UFC heavyweight fighter of all time, Stephen Marichick said the one time he fought in Cleveland, his hometown, when he defended his title against Overeem, he said afterwards that he would never do that again because it was just so much, even at that level, it was so much pressure because of everybody coming out, everybody there. And he's fought, you know, he fought for the belt when he won uh, uh, against for Doom down in uh, Brazil in enemy territory. So I do think it's very important at any level of fighter to make it about you, your opponent, and what the referee is saying and your corner. And that's, that's it. Because if it's anything more than that, um, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. It really is very dialed in. So that's great. Who's going to be in your corner? And uh, have you been training anything in practice to kind of work on what they tell you in corner? Have you been doing corner drills where they rotate you through anything like that to get you ready for that? Yeah, we, uh, we uh, completely like acted out, you know, like yeah. uh, me and my training partners, like, yeah, you want to touch gloves, you know, like yeah. we like uh, basically like, like it's a real thing, you know, mm -hmm. and uh as far as uh, corner man is going to be my coach, Don Caker. And uh, can you have more than one one person in there? I'm not, you're I'm not you're sure. allowed two. So in, can, in, am, in amateur, and to, to my understanding, you're allowed two in your corner. One is able to go inside. The other has yeah. to stay outside. A, a, a trick key to that, some people do it differently, is you can either set up close to the door so that the second person can kind of be close or I think what most people end up doing is the stool goes someplace and then the person outside is kind of through the cage either over the cage or kind of through the cage because one nice thing not all regional promotions do this but one nice thing that 247 funny chip chip does is it has an apron around the outside of the cage which is about three and a half feet wide so plenty of space for the second person to be on the outside of the cage, but you actually are allowed to, as you go up, I think pros are allowed three, but for amateurs, you're allowed two. Okay. Then, Which yeah, I'm glad I'll, you've been training all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My coaches definitely have me ready. You know, they're 
they're they're great. They know what they're doing. They've been there before. They've done it. And uh, but yeah, I've, uh, I have my head coach Donnie in there, my corner, and uh, my jujitsu coach Justin. Well, that's a that's a great combination. Usually, you look for coaches just like you did there, uh, that have different skill sets, different mindsets. So it's not just the same uh, idea in the corner, which is really fantastic. I have to say, it's been great getting to know you. It's always fun welcoming people new, both to the sport and also to 247 Fighting Championships. I think it's a premier uh, promotion, not only in uh, Pittsburgh, but they've been flying people in. And this is their ninth brawl in the Berg. But I think when you add in some others, um, it's probably their 10th or 11th overall. And I think they're really showing themselves to be a great promotion. I appreciate you coming on the show. I can't wait to talk to you. At the, at the fight October 23rd. For anybody looking to get tickets, get them from Shane, get them from his gym. They're also available on 247fighting.com. Thanks so much, Shane, for coming on. You're welcome, Justin. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Have a good it. one. Take care. All right. See you, bud. All right.